Today, we're going to go through how you can build a no-code RAG system in Make.com. Now, RAG is a very common pattern when building AI automations and apps. For those of you who haven't heard of RAG before, RAG stands for Retrieval Augmented Generation. And there's lots of content online that go into a lot of detail on what RAG is. But at a high level, RAG or Retrieval Augmented Generation refers to giving large language models the ability to refer to external pieces of information. So why is this useful? So these days, the context windows on large language models are getting bigger and bigger, but there are still cases where you can't fit all of your knowledge into a single ChatGPT or large language model core. So as an example, these days, you can probably put in one PDF into ChatGPT or two, but imagine if you had 100 PDFs or 200 PDFs, there's no way to put all of those PDFs into a single ChatGPT core or single large language model. So in those cases, what we need to do is use RAG. So RAG in these cases generally means that you will take all these PDFs, you'll split them up into lots of little small chunks, embed them, turn them into vectors, and then do a search on them when you have a question to find what chunks are relevant and then only pull in the relevant chunks to put into ChatGPT or your large language model. Now, there's a lot of nuances in how RAG can work. There's graph RAG, light RAG, there's sort of new RAG methodologies coming out all the time. But at a high level, basically, you have a corpus of text, you chunk it up somehow into small pieces, and you have some way to retrieve relevant chunks from that corpus to then pass into your large language model. Cool. So now we kind of understand what RAG is, where, where and when do we use it? So RAG is very common in question and answer type use cases. So if you've used a custom support agent online, chances are that they're using RAG on the back end. So they've probably taken all of their custom support documentation, put it into a knowledge base or a corpus. And then every time a end user asks a question to the customer support agent, a customer support agent will do a search on its knowledge base or its corpus, and then pull out the relevant pieces of information from that support documentation and then use that to generate a response for the end user. Another very common use case where RAG is employed is the chat with PDF use case. So these days people will sort of do want to spend their time reading a long PDF. So you might upload a PDF and then just chat on that PDF. Now, as I mentioned before, because the context windows on large language models are getting bigger and bigger, if it's a small or just single PDF, generally you can just put that all into a context window. But as it gets larger, as you get more PDFs, you can no longer do that. The other consideration here is cost. So if you're putting in a lot of tokens into the context window, then there's higher costs. And then latency, the more tokens you put into the context window, the slower or the longer it takes for the large language model or ChatGPT to respond to. Anyways, that's sort of the background around why you might use RAG or Retrieval Augmented Generation in your AI automations or AI builds. In this video, I'm just going to go through a very simple chat with PDF example, and I'm going to go through it step by step so that you can follow along. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. So to begin with, I'm just going to delete everything. So we start from scratch. Any RAG system really starts with thinking about what type of information you want to include within your knowledge base or within your corpus. So in this case, we might just have, let's just find a PDF. So I've used this one before. So this is a AI automation and future work PDF from McKinsey. Maybe I want to chat with PDF on this, right? Maybe I just want to ask questions about this PDF. Now, realistically, this PDF is not that long, right? It's only seven pages. So chances are I can just upload this entire PDF into ChatGPT and chat on it pretty easily. But imagine if this PDF wasn't seven pages. Imagine if it was 700 pages or if I had 10 PDFs that I wanted to chat on. In those cases, I would start to need to look into RAG. So for this example, I'm just going to download this PDF and then I'm going to upload it to my knowledge base for RAG. So for my knowledge base, I'm going to use Dumpling AI. I've already set up a knowledge base previously, but I'm just going to delete it quickly and recreate it just for this tutorial. So I'm going to delete this. So that will delete the knowledge base and I'm going to create a new knowledge base, give it the name automation resources. So I want to create this knowledge base. And then what you need to do is just put in all the documents or the text you want to query on into the knowledge base. So here I have a um, add document. So I'm just going to quickly drag in that McKinsey PDF here, I'm going to call it AI Automation Briefing, and I'm going to add this document. So when I press Add Document, what Dumpling AI is doing is it's taking that PDF, extracting the text from the PDF, splitting that text into chunks, and then for each chunk, it's turning it into an embedding. So what that means is it's turning it into a representation of its semantic meaning. And the value of that is after we have all these embeddings, all these chunks that are represented by this semantic meaning, when we do a search, we can look for chunks based on their meaning. So for example, if I'm looking for chunks that talk about funding, 
the chunks don't necessarily have to say the word funding explicitly. So it's not a keyword match anymore. It's really a match based on semantic need. So you can see here now that the has been added to the resource list. So on the side here, you can sort of test out your, your knowledge base. So what we're going to do is have a quick look in the PDF to see if there's anything that's interesting. We might be interested in AI investment and countries rankings, all that sort of stuff. So if we come back here to dumping AI, I asked the question when I tried this in the past. So what is the US ranking in AI investment? So ideally it's going to pull out chunks of the text that are relevant. So here it's got that chunk that's pretty relevant here. And there's sort of other chunks here. And then sort of, as you go down, you can see the relevant score is going down. So as you keep going, eventually the chunks will be less relevant, which is why you want to limit your results sort of to a reasonable amount based on your use case. Cool. So we've got the knowledge base working now in, in practice, you probably want to add a lot more PDFs or longer PDFs, but for this tutorial, this is enough. So what I'm going to do is go back now to make.com and it all starts with pulling out the relevant chunks from the knowledge base. So I'm just going to use the search knowledge base module from Dumpling AI in make.com and you need the knowledge base ID. So to get the knowledge base ID, just go back to Dumpling AI, copy the knowledge base ID here, go back to make.com and just paste that in. For the search query, I'm just going to do something similar. Um, so what is the US investment in AI, right? Something like that. And I'm going to keep the results count as five. So if I run this, I should get very similar results to what I saw before. And then you can see here, yes, I'm getting very similar results. Cool. So what I have now is just relevant chunks, but this doesn't actually form a full rag system yet because retrieval augmented generation involves generation as well, right? So what we need to do is take these different chunks and then pass it into ChatGPT or a large language model for it to generate a response to the original question, right? So it's sort of like I, I, the user asks this question, what is the US investment in AI? We find all these chunks, we give it to ChatGPT along with the question, and then ChatGPT can generate a response to this question that references all of these different chunks. So to do that, it's actually quite straightforward. We want to put in a ChatGPT module and I'm just going to do the create a completion. Now here, it's sort of up to you, which model you want to use. I think for something this straightforward for mini will probably be enough. And I'm just going to say for the system prompt, I'll say Tassa, it uses question based on the references provided. So very simple prompt, depending on what you're doing, you want to, I guess, make that prompt a bit more detailed. So for the user, I'm just going to say the question is Ideally, it's a variable. I haven't variableized it yet. So I'm just going to copy my question here. And then we have the references or the chunks, and I'm just going to put in all the search results. Yeah. So we actually need to turn all of these into a string. So I actually forgot a step here. So I'm going to unlink this and I'm going to turn this into a big piece of text. So there is a text aggregator. And what we need to do here is just take all of the content and turn it into one big piece of text. I'm going to connect this again. And then down here, I'm just going to put in that new reference that I've now got. It should hopefully come up. I know it doesn't. It's a book. Make.com is a bit annoying. So I'm going to delete this, re-add the module, and it should come. So once again, I'm going to choose four Omini. Let's add our messages quickly. Let's see if this works. So if I have, yep, now I have the text and then I'm going to say the question, so question and references, and then I'm just going to use my system prompt again. So answer it uses question based on the provided references to so max tokens, just keep it pretty simple. And then that's basically all you need. So let's run through this from the beginning. Um, ChatGPT should give me a nice response. So as of two, that's a pretty nice response. Now. If we actually want to turn this into a chat with PDF use case, then we do need some sort of front end for the user to ask their question. And then we need this to sort of go back to the user, the answer to go back to the user in some way. So potentially what you want to do is do a email chat with PDF as an example. So what you want to do in that case is have a mail hook. So basically every time your automation receives a email, you trigger this automation. And then at the end of it, you get ChatGPT's response and you send it back to the person who asked the question, right? So you've got a chat with PDF email assistant effectively. Now I'm not going to set this up now, but if you've watched my previous video, I've talked about Mailhook in a lot of depth and I've used the Gmail module a lot as well. So here with the Mailhook, you'd set up an email address. Every time you email this webhook, it will trigger this automation. You would need to update this search query with what's coming in 
from the from the email, so text here. And you'd also need to update here the question to be what's coming in from the email as well. And then you would pass in the ChatGPT response into here as the content and maybe the response, something like that, right? Cool. So that's basically how you would do a chat with PDF email assistant. But really what I'm trying to get through through to you with this tutorial is this middle section around how you can build a RAG system in make.com. Because you can use this for so many things, right? So it's the customer support Q&A thing I mentioned earlier, chat with PDF, but really you could actually use this for content generation as well, right? Let's say you had 100, 500 different blogs or pieces of content and you want your new pieces of content to be able to pull on the knowledge of your existing content, then you can set up a knowledge base with all your existing content so that any new generation leverages your existing knowledge. So if you're a content creator, that'd be super powerful. If you're doing this for marketing, also super powerful. But that's sort of all I wanted to cover in this tutorial. If you have any questions or thoughts, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll see you in my next video.